obedience is demanded from God's people. Obedience. It says in Isaiah 119, If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I know that I want to eat the good of the land. And so for me to do that, for me to be able to do that, I must not only be uh, willing, but I must be obedient to what the Lord is telling me to do. You know, we each have a plan and a purpose on this earth. The Lord has a special plan for you. Jeremiah 29 11. His plans are good and he has an expected outcome for you. And so as we talk today about obedience, I want you just to uh, put your concentration on your life and evaluate and assess your life in the area of obedience. Has the Lord spoken to you to do a certain thing and you've been dragging your feet? Or you've said, oh, I just don't know if I can do that or not. Oh, I don't have the money to do that. I don't have the finances to do that. We can, you know, the, the human being, the individual can certainly put up different excuses for not obeying the voice of the Lord. And, but I want you to, to hear what I'm saying to you from the heart of God today, that He desires obedience out of each one of us. You know, and it says in Philippians 2 that Jesus was obedient. And it says here that He was obedient even to the death of the cross. And being found in appearance as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Now, part of the word for 2012 that the Lord has given me is much has been given, much is required. And the Lord has put, invested in many of you, much word, much anointing, much power, and He is requiring something from you, and He is going to continue uh, to ask you to do certain things. You know, and I want us to uh, just focus in uh, today on Jonah. And many of you are familiar with this passage uh, in the book of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God. And God gave him some instructions. And in verse 1, chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amidiel, Go to the city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. You know, he said, Jonah, I need you to go down and, and speak to this city. I need you to preach to this city. Has he told you to go to this community or that community or this city or that town and, and prophesy over it? Has he told you to speak to uh, and uproot that wickedness that is in that city or community. You know, my husband and I do this uh, on a regular basis. Wherever God sends us, whatever He tells us to do, that's what we desire to do. We are willing, and, and I pray that we are obedient to the voice of the Lord. It says here in verse, two, uh, verse 3, But Jonah ran from the Lord, and headed for Tarnish. He went down to Joppa where he boarded a ship bound for a port, that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarnish to flee from the Lord. But then there was a great wind that came. See, the winds of God are blowing right now. And there are changes in the wind. And there are changes for your life. Some of you have been sitting uh, for a long period of time. The, the Christ man inside of you has been dormant. And the Lord wants to, to rouse him. He wants him to rise up. The, I'm talking about the inner man. I'm talking about the Christ man on the inside of you. He wants that, uh, that man to rise up and take authority and rule and reign in your life. And it says right here, there was a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose 
uh, that the ship threatened to break up. All of the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the ship, out, out into the sea to lighten up the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Many of God's people have fallen asleep. They have been lulled to sleep uh, by messages that they have heard, by their wrong mindset, by their own thinking, uh, their own flesh has put them into a deep sleep. And the Lord is saying, wake up. Wake up unto righteousness and be obedient to what I have called you to do. There have been things that have put been put uh, aside. There have been things that have been cast aside. And, and the thought has come to you, well, somebody else will do it. Well, the pastor will do it. Oh, uh, sister so-and-so will do it. Oh, brother so-and-so will do it. No, God is saying he wants you, you. To do what he has called you to do. To be obedient to the voice of the Lord. And so he fell into a deep sleep. And the captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. They were saying, Please, please, uh, pray to your God. Call upon him that he might save us. You know, there are people that are lost and dying in this world. And perhaps God has told you uh, to go to your family and, and to talk to them about salvation. To talk to them about uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Maybe he has told you to go and lay hands on someone that you know that is sick and dying. Be obedient to the voice of the Lord. The sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots and find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell to, to Jonah. And so, of course, we know the story. They threw him overboard. They threw him overboard and a giant fish, or even we could say a whale, but it was a giant fish. We know that. Large enough to swallow a whole man. And he was swallowed up. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he said, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon us. You know, be careful that you do not hang around disobedient brothers and sisters because there are storms that will come and you do not want to be involved in that be obedient to the voice of the Lord in verse 17 but the Lord provided a great fish to swallow up Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights now we also know that this is a symbol and a shadow or type of Jesus Christ being in the belly of the earth, three days and three nights. You know, this is, in verse 2, From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, and he said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You know, God is always listening to his people. His ears are are attentive to their cries, hallelujah, and his eyes are ever watching you and I and those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 of chapter 2, You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the sea, and the currents swirled around me. All the waves and breakers swept over me, and I said I have been banished from, this, from your sight, yet I will look again. And as we read on, we find out that Jonah becomes thankful and he gets his, his, his act together and he says, I'm going to obey God. And in here it says here, in verse 8, those who cling to worthless idols uh, forfeit the grace that could be theirs. 
but I with a song of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And then the Lord spoke, the Father spoke and commanded the fish and the fish vomited Jonah up on dry land. And Jonah went and preached to Nineveh and there was a great revival. If you're just obedient to the voice of the Lord, you're going to see the hand of the Lord move mightily. He's desiring obedience this day. I pray for you this day, and I encourage you to hear the voice of the Lord and obey what he's telling you to do. I pray courage over you, and I pray strength over you this day, those of you that have been sitting down on the Lord, that you will rise up and begin to walk in the very presence of Almighty God, that you will begin to walk in His power, you begin to walk in His anointing, and you will do what He's called you to do.